It's a changing of the guard with two new anchors on the desk for our live show this Thursday on Our Sports Update. And we'll focus on the nationally ranked Hurricanes coming up north to take on the 2-1 Owls. Plus, I'm Kylie O'Connor, live from the studio set. Later on, I'll be talking about the volleyball team's success so far this season compared to the last. Owl Sports Update is live and it starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Owl Sports Update. It's a new semester which means a new duo at the desk. He's Michael Merville and I'm Dan Podolsky. In our first show we have to start with sad news that's impacted every aspect of life at Temple and sports is no exception. Temple University was stunned at the passing of acting president Dr. Joanne Epps on Tuesday. Epps was speaking at a memorial service at the university on Tuesday when she fell ill and was taken to the hospital where she was later pronounced dead at age 72. Epps had been anointed acting president in April of this year. She served the Temple community for nearly 40 years and our hearts mourn in her passing. The passing of interim president Epps is hitting Temple so hard in so many areas. Athletic director Arthur Johnson put out a statement saying, quote, her fondness for athletics brought her to many competitions where she enjoyed passionately cheering for our student athletes. President Epps was a beloved leader and she will be greatly missed. Our thoughts and prayers are with President Epps family and our Temple community. Joanne Epps will be remembered this Saturday at Temple's football game versus the Miami Hurricanes. There's expected to be a huge crowd on hand for this much anticipated game. And this will give a large portion of the student body time to remember Epps in front of a nationally televised audience. Kickoff will be at 3.30 p.m. on ESPN2. Before Miami comes to town, it's time to look pat back at this past weekend when Temple welcomed Norfolk State. Both teams stood at 1-1. One one. The Owls came into this matchup as a whopping 30 and a half point favorites. This is the first of a two game homestand for the Owls. Temple's offense came out firing. EJ Warner completes this 15 yard touchdown pass to Jaquez Smith. Temple jumps out to an early lead, seven to nothing. Late in the first quarter, Quincy Patterson took it in himself for a one yard score. Owls on top, 14 to nothing. Norfolk State got on the board in the second quarter. Aaron Moore hauls in this two-yard pass from quarterback Otto Coons. Temple remains in front, 14-7. Jaquez Smith comes right back. A 51-yard touchdown as he accelerates past defenders. Temple up 21-7. Running back Darvin Hubbard, he gets on the action for this 21-yard score. And Temple takes a 28-7 lead heading into the halftime locker room. Late in the third quarter, Temple tacks on one more score for good measure. Quincy Patterson punches in a two-yard rush for his second touchdown of the game. Add a field goal, and that's your final. Temple heads out of the lake with a blowout win, 41 to nine. You know, it's always uh, real special when you have a chance to get up on the scoreboard and, and start working your depth chart a little bit. It's real important for us moving forward that our depth, you know, anytime you have a good game, right, and a good start to a football game, it is, becomes contagious amongst your football team. You know, you get some confidence built up early in the game and, you know, I uh, hadn't been able to do that the past two weeks and today, again, that was a, a heavy emphasis of ours is just develop some confidence in our in our play early in the game offensively. And yeah, it was big. Uh, last two weeks we haven't started fast um, and just have the confidence to kind of receive that ball once we won the coin toss and let us go out there and, and show what we can do. And we put a good drive together to start off. I think that carried on the rest of the day. The Owls came out strong and it was clear it was a focus point, with the offense totaling the most yards and points scored this season. Their dominating performance was led by star running back Jaquez Smith, was a huge part of this win with 142 rushing yards. Owl Sports, Owl Sports Update's Jane Rivera has more. This week, Temple Football added another game in one column, defeating Norfolk State 41-9. The lopsided scores in huge parts of the contribution of the offense and their scorching hot start.
Temple's slow start in games one and two was very noticeable. Against Akron and Rutgers, the Owls scored a combined 10 points prior to halftime. There seems to be an emerging star for the Owls in their offense. Smith seems to be the leading back for the Owls as he has the most rushing yards even though he didn't play in week one. The Owls look to continue their dominating performance next week by establishing a rushing attack early, something that could help keep Miami off the field. Reporting for Owls Sports Update, I'm Jaden Rivera. Let's get back to that Miami game. The Owls have one of their toughest matchups this season with the ranked Hurricanes coming into town. For more insight on this game, we have Al Sport or Inside the Nets anchor Jake Gable on the desk with us. Hey, Jake. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Let's get things started. The Owls are walking in as heavy underdogs. What is it about this Miami team that many think will be too much for Temple? I mean, where do I really start? They're ranked 20th in the nation for a reason. Uh, I'll start with the offense. They've scored at least 35 points in every game so far, and that's including beating a ranked Texas A&M squad. The offense starts with quarterback Tyler Van Dyke, who's been having a great season so far. He's had two, 822 passing yards, eight touchdowns to just one interception, and 76% of his passes are being caught for receptions. Now, switching on over to the defensive side of things, they are top 25 in both fewest yards and points allowed in the country, and then they have the seventh best rushing defense in the nation as well. One advantage that the Owls have on paper is in their passing defense. The Owls are only allowing 171 yards per game. Compare that to Miami, who's allowing 210 yards per game. How can the Owls exploit this advantage against Miami? Well, that's going to fall on the shoulders of E.J. Warner. He's going to have to have a big game in order to keep Temple in this one. And I'm not so sure how much of Miami's numbers in their passing defense falls on them getting up on big leads and then other teams having to start throw the ball to try to catch up to their offense. Because like I mentioned earlier, we know that Miami offense can score a lot. So E.J. Warner, the entire passing offense, is going to have to have a big game in order to stay in this one. Well, I'm sure Coach Drayton is expecting a big game out of his players on Saturday. Who on the particular do you think needs to step up for Temple to pull out this kind of upset? I want to look at two players in particular. That's Ben Osweke and Dominic Hill. Both of them are corners opposite side of Jalen McMurray, the single digit who's been having a great season so far. The other two corners, Osweke and Hill, like I just mentioned, they've been having more inconsistent seasons so far. Miami has a great offense, and they have three receivers that have 200-plus receiving yards or more. To put that in perspective, Temple doesn't have a single receiver with over 200 yards receiving. So all three of the corners are going to have to step up big in this one against a really good Miami team. All right, Jake, thanks for coming on. We'll see you again on the desk Tuesday for Inside the Nest. Thanks, guys. Coming up, we have an inside look on the women's volleyball and what's contributed to their early season success. And later, women's soccer gets in the win column. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Wednesday night, Temple hosted its first match of conference play at McGonagall Hall against Tulsa. Both teams come in hot, the Owls with a three-match winning streak, and Tulsa winning five of its last six. An early kill from Tulsa turned into an exchange of volleys, which ended with a kill by graduate student Avery Luoma. Luoma finished the match with seven. Tulsa serving now, and Taylor Davenport puts points on the board with a tip-in over the net. Davenport was the Owls leader for the match in kills with nine. However, Temple isn't enough to test Tulsa, falling in all three sets, 3-0. Three the Owls will play next on Saturday at Florida Atlantic. Despite Wednesday's loss, it has been a relatively strong season for the volleyball team. Owl Sports Update's Kylie O'Connor is at the studio set to explain. Hey, Kylie. Thanks, guys. Last weekend, I had the chance to travel to the Burbs to cover Temple at a tournament hosted by Villanova. And in two weekend matches, the Owls did show why they are on an upswing with their second year head coach. The Temple volleyball team is off to a hot start to its season. The best start since 2019. 
This is the second year under coach Linda Hampton Keith, and there seems to be major improvements with nine wins in its first 11 matches. It's a new year, right? It's new, you know, it was a whole entire new um, kind of attitude going into the season. Obviously, we will always look at the season as starting back in January, right? Like last season ended and we started preparing for this season back in January. So this feels normal. The Owls ended last season with a five match losing streak, but a new season and a new streak. Temple started 2023 with five straight wins and it's been mostly positive the entire way. But this year they just expect the most out of us and I really like it because it push, if everyone's pushing you to do better, your teammates, your coaches, yourself, like the sky's the limit for this team. The team spent parts of the off season together traveling to Rome back in March. And in season, the small outings have continued. The Temple women's volleyball team is currently sitting at a 9-2 record and trying to continue their success throughout the second half of the season. The Owls have made big improvements compared to the end of last year and are hoping to end the season on a good note. We just want to play great volleyball and I hopefully what you saw today was when we kind of settled down and relaxed and just played, we're enjoying it, we're having fun, they're having a great time out yeah. there because we enjoy this game. If so, the good will be in conference with the Owls starting eight straight in the American this week. The Owls are then traveling down to Florida on Saturday to take on FAU, one of the newer teams in the American. They're back home one week from this Friday against Tulane. Reporting from the studio set, I'm Kylie O'Connor. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Kylie. We want to take a moment before we head to break to share a new feature we will start in our show two weeks from today. Both Danny and I will highlight the top three athletes of the week. Thursday's top three will debut on October 5th right here on Owl Sports Update at noon on TUTV. We're up against our second break of the show, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we will highlight women's soccer's win against Penn and also a new breakout defender on the men's side. Be right back. The Owls hosted the Quakers of Penn on Sunday at the Temple Sports Complex. Coming in struggling at 1-5-3 and, and off the back end of a loss to South Florida, Temple is looking for a non-conference win. Becky Myers got the scoring going for the Owls. She gets this PK, past the diving goalie, and puts the Owls up in front, one to nothing. In the 79th minute, Yasmeen Smith scores this goal of a beautiful assist and puts the Owls up in front, two to nothing. Penn would get on the board in the 84th minute as Lauren Teschel knocks them past the Temple defenders. However, the Owls are able to hang on for a much needed victory. Final score, two to one, for Temple's second win of the season. It's a new era for men's soccer with first-year head coach Brian Green. Along with Coach Green, freshman defender Nikolai Zapolowski has made an immediate impact as he was the first player to score for the Owls in just his second-ever collegiate match. The Owls are trying to rebuild, so it's often best to start young. That's where freshman defender Nikolai Zapolowski's intelligence on the field comes into play helping the Owls against opposing offenses. He, he's a competitor. I mean, um, he, he figures out ways to, to shut down attackers. The Puerto Rican native first laid his eyes on a soccer field during grade school, where he says his father noticed a new interest. I saw a field, so, and my dad saw I liked it, and that took me there, and I started playing. And when I came back to Puerto Rico, they put me in a club team. Zapolowski honed in on his skills as a defender and found a therapeutic approach while playing for MLS Next, the feeder program for the MLS. Zapolowski played on Orlando City SC, where they reached three playoff appearances during his tenure. I'm stressing some, about something outside of soccer. Once I'm in the field, I forget about everything, and I have fun. That's one of the most important part. The Orlando City club coach soon reached out to the then first-year men's soccer coach, Brian Green, about Zapolowski. And then, you know, then I got in touch with him, and I, I really liked him at that point. Just a uh, really personable, outgoing kid, uh, great personality, and uh, very sure of himself in, in a really good way. Being sure of himself on the field has paid off, as the freshman was the first Temple Al to score this season. Zapolowski continues to learn from and build on his early success in North Broad. Zapolowski, along with men's soccer, will play this Saturday at home against AAC newcomer UAB. Lots going on. Let's take a look at the weekend calendar. 
On Friday, Temple Field Hockey's team is looking to make it five in a row as the Owls take on Old Dominion in Norfolk at 2 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, Taylor Davenport and the women's volleyball team will be in their first road AAC matchup as they take on FAU in South Florida at 6 p.m. on Saturday and 2 p.m. on Sunday. Also, Temple's men's soccer will be in its first conference matchup of the year against UAB. And of course, we've got some football. On ESPN2, Temple will face Tyler Van Dyke and number 20 ranked Miami at 3.30 p.m. at the link. If you can't catch up with all of the games on the schedule, all you need to do is follow us here at Owl Sports Update on all social medias. Sports Brief on Mondays, Inside the Nets on Tuesdays, and our flagship show on Thursdays. Always follow us on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it nowadays. Out at Owl Sports Update. That's all we have today. Be sure to follow us on socials at Owl Sports Update. On behalf of the studio set, I am Michael Merville. This is Danny Podolowski. Stay safe and thank you for watching.